Hi, today we are giving a look to Badgy, latest version, and as always, let's start with the design. So the first thing I didn't notice, it took me a while, is this clock, time plus day, and I actually didn't see it. It got a bit confused in the background, but when I did see it, I thought that it's pretty useful. You sure have a clock here as well, but it doesn't display the date as well. And I think this is the first time I actually see a widget used on the background. And I think it's a good idea. The only thing that might, uh, you know, worry me a bit is how it will perform on darker wallpapers. Like this one is a bit buzzy, sorry, not dark, but light. And you can see that the readability of this clock already falls a bit, but you still have this one. And I also wonder if it's possible to customize it. I guess we'll see it later. Let's get back to the wallpaper that we had before. I think the wallpaper is okay. I'm not a big fan of the style, but it's fine. And then we have the top panel. We have the application menu with this grid like list of application and then this more compact section. Pretty useful, it's a simple menu launcher but effective. I think that I've seen many grid plus categories launchers and they work really well. And then we have here a system tray with the elements that are way too close to each other. You seriously should, put, you should really put some spacing between them because like this, they're too close. You are guaranteed to misclick one of them at least one time per day. And just kidding. And if you open up an application, you can see that you don't actually have a menu bar in here unless it's for different kind of application. Let's open up LibreOffice as well. Yes, thank you. The menu bar of the application stays here and not here as it could have been. And the result is that this part of the panel is actually pretty empty compared to this one. So at least GNOME puts a label that, that's a bit longer. It feels a bit unbalanced overall. But getting back to the system tray part, so let's see what we have. First of all, this one I think is for uh, virtual desktops. We can open up more virtual desktops. I don't know about switching between them. Maybe there are some shortcuts, but as far as managing virtual desktop, you also get a list of application, which is really useful. Then this is simple screen recorder. We have this one, which is quick note. Also very interesting idea. You usually don't get a quick note by default in the panel, although you can put it in pretty much any desktop, but actually having it by default, Interesting, I think it's a good idea, I like it. And you also get, as part of the quick note, a way to revert what you've done, character by character. Then you have a folder icon to switch easily to other places, such as documents. Again, something that you can add in other desktops, but it's usually not there by default. Then we have notification with a sidebar, very nice to see. I like side sidebars for application, uh, sorry, notifications. And we can also switch to applets to get what I think is a customizable, customizable list of applets. And then we have Wi-Fi stuff, very simple. Battery stuff, even more simple. We just get a show battery per uh, percentage, sorry, and power settings. Then a uh, volume rocker, again, very simple, but we can actually mute it and open up settings to switch between the speakers. As always, I kind of prefer when you can do it from the volume applet directly, but that's not very important if you have a quick link to the settings. Then Bluetooth, again, super simple. The system tray is very simple, but it has many features that maybe some other desktops have but they don't have turned on by default. This widget, the notification sidebar, the ability to have places and also the, sorry, quick notes, very useful. And I think it's an interesting idea to provide to the user, user more stuff compared to other desktop by default. 
then we have the sidebar button that actually opens up both applets and notifications. I wonder how do I customize this sidebar again. I think we'll see it later in the Magi layout application. We have the turn off button as always very simple. I see that there's a uh, what's this like five pixels of border that's a bit lighter. I wonder if it's accidental or by design because you don't get it here but you do get it here so it's a bit weird and moving on I I've seen that there are many badgy applications such as this themes and layouts which interests me so let's pop it up and I can actually choose between many designs by default so let's see if there's one that seems particularly pretty white sir let's try this white sir theme it's one click to install very interesting that we get third party third party themes directly in the main page of the Baji application let's wait for the changes to appear and while we're waiting there's also more stuff in here isn't it and I don't know where where is it thank you I got lost hey Baji let's get back to themes and layouts and big sur let's apply it makeover interesting choice of word makeover we use look and feel but makeover is also pretty good and we get a good theme we don't get blur which is a bit of a pity i kind of wish we could get that but i don't think it's supported at all by the uh, window manager here but the theme is pretty clean. We also get the icons, the title bar, application theme, stuff like that changed, very nice. But right now we are reviewing the default look, so let's get back to whatever the default was. Uh, arc design. Was it arc design? Hmm. I don't think it was our design. No, it wasn't. This one's pretty, I like it. But where is it? Let me see. Posillo? Yeah, it looks like this one. Yes, this one, okay. And we also got a new notification, so you can see how is the sidebar with a notification. Very nice. And we also get a layout section. And let's try to change the layout, can we? We've got Cupertino with a menu, interesting. The one with menu and left sidebar. Let's go with Cupertino to see how well the global menu works. Let's open up files and it works. Very nice. The menu looks very nice you can switch sorry slide between the items to get them and let me get back to the default one because again that's what we're supposed to look for but still very nice that it's that easy to change both layout and appearance I guess you don't get much finer uh, customization settings but this is already a lot. Then what else do you have? What's the online store? Okay. Stuff we all get. Community, stuff like that. Okay. Let's see what more badgy stuff we get here. What about extras? What's this? Oh, very interesting. So this is Applets. We get an analog clock, an application launcher, application menu. Brightness control, we don't get brightness control. Oh, this annoys me so much. We don't get brightness control. And I know you're saying, why don't you just press the buttons to change the brightness? But 
I actually have a two in an two in one computer, meaning that I can just use the touch screen part of it. And when you have touch screen, being able to click on the battery and then slide to change the brightness is a must. Like in order to change the brightness right now, I need to open settings, go to what display, not background display, displays, mm, not this one, but there's night light, right? Ooh, the, the, the UI is very nice, I like it. And it's impossible to change with touch this option, but still very nice, I like it. Okay, now turn this off, thank you. And then, how do I change the brightness? Power. Screen brightness, like this. Okay, this is very bad UX Y wise, sorry, UX wise, if you don't have the brightness button with you. You get a countdown applet, very nice, I like it. And this is, I guess, all three, three, third, sorry, third party apps. Let's try to install this one to see how well it's handled. We can get a link to the repos repository that contains them all. Very nice. And there's not much feedback that's actually installing, but let's leave it in the, ah, it's done, thank you. And now, how do I use this one? How do I add an applet? Right click to the panel. First guess, does nothing. Okay, sidebar. Hmm, I've got no clue. There's probably some documentation somewhere, but the point is that stuff like that should be quite self-explanatory, like adding a widget should be pretty simple if you have widget support, sorry, applet, whatever. I've also seen that there is a drawing application, which is very interesting. Okay, so it seems to be, okay. And you can actually draw in this, like this, very nice. I wonder if it supports like Pressure, probably not, but what else do we get that was interesting? Well, one thing I haven't seen is how is show all windows? Okay, so this is the Windows switcher. Pretty simple, Plasma has a very similar one if you set it up, very normal stuff. And there is no way to actually show whole windows in the same time, okay. And what about switching between the workspaces? So let's open up settings again. Ah, another thing I've just noticed, the bottom menu is smart auto hide, which is super cool. I love smart auto hide, should be the default for all of the task manager only panels. We also get power mode, this is from GNOME, I remember when they put it in. And what else? I was looking for something that I all already forgot about. And that is virtual desktops. Virtual, sorry, virtual desktops, nope. Okay, nope. As far as touch screen gestures, sorry, I meant, as far as touchpad gestures goes, there's none. A bit sad, but Plasma on X doesn't have them either, so it would be very unfair for me to criticize this. Then what else do we have here? Well, Text editor is gedit, um, yes. And I mean, that's pretty much it as far as budget goes. So if we click on the clock, we get calendar, an option to open up the calendar. 
and these title bars with everything in it always stress me out a bit because I don't know where to drag them from and sure I know that pretty much everywhere is fine but it feels very weird to drag from a button but that's because I'm, come from, I'm coming from Plasma preferences oh this is very nice I like it so we get very cons very I mean we get settings directly in the pop-up of the applet this is something we could look into like when you have an applet also like here and you want to customize it there's just a customize button that brings up a page with all of the options maybe less option that we currently have because we have too many options for each applet it could be very nice because you can just customize it without having to actually open up another window and system monitor resources do we have anything open no memory 2.2 gigabytes but this is completely unreliable as a benchmark I'm running simple screen recorder that pops up memory so very for what else do we have I think that's pretty much it because I mean the application uh, are the one that we've seen I don't see any budgie specific application here yeah so okay so overall the things I like the most are the sidebar very nice one more thing I didn't notice, we get adaptive transparency, like this. Oh, actually, this one feels a bit budget specific, at least the look of it. This doesn't feel like Nautilus. I don't know if it's Nautilus under the hood, but it doesn't feel like so. And one thing is this black color is very out of place. You get a grey status bar, grey, grey, and then this dark black which doesn't quite merge with the title bar. Uh, it's a bit weird, but having a sidebar that supports this tree-like view, very nice, and we can uh, also hide it. Let's get back to the normal one. We get devices, network normal stuff let's say we also get a button to go to the parent folder which I've actually accidentally removed from Dolphin I think which annoys me so much and then we also get uh, is this list what's this compact view okay so it's like a list but not quite a list okay and we have a zoom slider okay so yeah the only thing that bothers me a bit is this black bar but except for that it's very nice there's also this separator which is a bit out of place but minor stuff okay so overall as I was saying sidebar I like it notifications very nice the idea of putting default widgets that the user might use but maybe not it's an interesting concept this clock stuff like that it's something that we could look into but plasma is very simple by default so we don't like to put too many options by default like that the my the user might not need because as soon as the user needs something they have anything they want of course but except for that when I saw this Magnus application, I thought for sure that this was going to be a chess application. Interesting naming scheme. It doesn't work for me, but probably it's because I'm recording. And that's pretty much it. Overall, I like it. It's very simple. There's not much to say. Most of it is like GNOME under the hood they give you much more customization layouts how do you make covers they call them very nice the sidebar very nice 
interesting design decision on some things like the transparency plus shadow, the clock, the cursor. I don't quite like the cursor they used on the fold. I prefer the gnome one. And of course we get a dock with the magnifier effect, which is very nice to see. And that's pretty much it. I have a positive opinion of Budgie and what should I try out next week? Please let me know because Budgie was actually a suggestion they gave me last week. So I'm looking forward to know about the last cool, sorry, the next cool desktop to actually review. Bye. Wrong button, this one. Hey.